how to start a research investigation into taxpayer subsidized urban redevelopment. All right, this is a great topic. This is one of the things that you know I really enjoy uh, doing work on because you can see your work, uh, you know, up front in the communities that you help. Uh, there's a lot of wrongdoing going on in some of these local level uh, bond arrangements. And so it, it's, a, it's a great place if you want to get into this type of work or if you want to get involved with forming the news that you are uh, reading every day, this is a great place to start. <clears throat> so how to start a research investigation into taxpayer subsidized urban redevelopment. Uh, this is for sure more of a hands-on type of investigation. Uh, it's something that the first thing you do is you, you have to pre really prepare yourself mentally. You have to get ready to be involved with people who are very, very emotional. You have to be ready to have to sit through frantic whistleblower type sessions with individuals within the community who you're researching these bonds for. All right. Uh, how do you prepare yourself for this? Uh, my main tip would be to make sure you enter every conversation leaving your emotions at the door. You have to drain yourself of, of emotion before you enter any conversations related to these types of investigations. Now that we're clear on checking your emotions at the door, let's move on to the hands-on portion of today's podcast. Mission number one for all taxpayer subsidized urban redevelopment or urban renewal project investigations, you have to make real and solid connections to local activists and office holders who oppose the taxpayer subsidized projects popping up all over their communities. Okay, you have to make these connections. Speaking of which, <clears throat> I was at a meeting last night where emotions were flying as the mayor of an up and coming uh, city near where I live watched with some concern as city employees explained how no traffic studies were done before allowing a brand new multi-million dollar prefab home panel manufacturer to set up shop and start shipping huge panels all over the country. So when you attend one of these meetings, you want to let everyone else do the talking. Only ask a question if it's, if it's a necessity. A good example would be the one I asked last night. The city employees were explaining how fire stations built in other areas of the city were really benefiting the urban renewal part of the city, saying the current fire station in the urban renewal area was being forced to cover a larger area, which was expanding response time. The new stations would cut response time down considerably in the urban renewal area, which is what the meeting was all about, the urban renewal area. Well. That made sense, but lost in all of that talk was the actual dollar amount of bond money that was spent directly on the fire station in the urban renewal development district area. Okay, so I had to ask the question because I needed to know which station was it and how much money did it get <clears throat> for my own purposes. Uh, you want to stay away from asking questions that would lead people to arguing or officials feeling embarrassed. You really don't want to have any gotcha questions, okay? It's really important when you go to these meetings that you are very respectful. No gotcha questions, ever. Okay, I'm going to say it again. Never, ever, ever gotcha questions. In our world, we don't do gotchas. That's for the talking heads and the politicians. That's for the activists. They love that stuff. That kind of stuff only gets in our way. Okay, and here's why. We're trying to get down to the truth. We need the help of the local authorities to do that. The best way to, to, to help your local authorities or local authorities help you is to never do a gotcha. No surprises ever. Everything should always be above board, beyond reproach. There's no way to do it other than that. Okay, period. <clears throat> what this means really at the end of the day is you have to put your ego aside. You have to put it aside so doors can be opened to information you need to do a good and fair investigation. With that said, keeping your eyes and ears open for something similar to what I heard at last night's meeting is imperative. All right. Let's just take a step back real quick. Just to recap, 
we're talking about the best practices and strategies for starting a citizen research investigation into taxpayer subsidized urban redevelopment. This meeting I attended last night was set up by two former city commissioners, both previously represented the area being redeveloped. First tip, pro tip, always arrive a little bit early, okay? Always arrive a little bit early. Pay attention to who's at the front of the room. Make sure you're listening to their conversations. What you're listening for is anyone who sounds frustrated or anxious. Take down their names, okay? Find out who they are. Make sure you've got a good pad and paper for good notes, okay? Here's what you're looking for, though, specifically, all right? Anyone who's a consultant or a lobbyist, if you can find either one of those people at a meeting like that, make sure you get their names. It's very important. You've hit the jackpot, though, if you can come across someone who is currently a lobbyist or a consultant and who used to work for the, for the municipality you're doing the investigation into. <laughs> if you can come across that person, you have hit the jackpot, okay? <clears throat> I hit the jackpot last night. There was a person who openly stated he used to work for the city just a few months ago and he's now a consultant on some of the projects being discussed. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Now that's not saying that there's gonna be corruption here. It's not saying that this guy did anything wrong. What I am saying is, if you go back <clears throat> to previous podcast, it's really important that you get down and you understand when you have a revolving door situation. Revolving door is when you have someone who's going from government job to private job, private sector job, then back to government, okay? Or they start off in a, in a government job and they go to a private sector job that's related to the government job they were working. That's what you, you, you anytime you find someone like that, <laughs> that's important for what we do. It's not saying that something wrong happened. What it's saying is, is if something wrong did happen, that's where you, it's probably going to be found, okay? Most likely. So, now that you know where to start, you know to not talk too much, you know to never ask gotcha questions, and you know specifically who to look for. You want to look for lobbyists and consultants, and you especially want to look for lobbyists and consultants who used to work for the city before, right? That's where you start. Now, the next steps are a little more complicated, but we'll get into that in the next episode. With that in mind, with that in mind, really, be safe. Have a great weekend. Be good. I look forward to talking to you guys next week. Take care.